the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, you may find yourself going, oh my goodness, it's almost Holy Week. Well, we still have um, time to prepare our hearts and to sit in silence and to soak up our God's mercy and his love. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. second book of Chronicles. In those days all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, 
while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kings of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he also has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought to us life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God, 
It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This Sunday of Lent is traditionally called Letare Sunday. It's in Latin meaning Rejoice. You'll find it in Isaiah 66. Rejoice, Jerusalem. And so we are going to rejoice as brothers and sisters here in Holy Rosary. Because indeed we have a reason for us to rejoice. Because we can see and experience hope. We can see and experience trust in the promise of salvation through the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we look at our history, we repeatedly turn away from God when we look at our lives. We always, we are always unfaithful to God. We are sometimes, and most probably indeed, always deceived by Satan to turn from God because we are led to think that there is something, something better than God. Indeed, we all know there is nothing, nothing better than God. But despite of our unfaithfulness, despite of our ungratefulness, God never abandoned us. He will always grant us mercy 
and welcome us into his embracing arms. Now, when we look at the gospel, much more in the gospel today, God shows his love to us by giving us his only son so that everyone who believe might not perish and might have eternal life. What is it that we believe? But what is it that we believe? We believe in the death and resurrection of Christ. Is it, in, it is in the death and resurrection of Christ that we find, we find our salvation. When we believe, we allow Christ's death to open, to open a space in our lives, to open a space in our very being for us to enter that space so that we can gaze, we can gaze at the cross of Christ. We have to fix our eyes looking at the cross of Christ. Now, going back to the first part of our gospel today, we have heard, and I would like to quote, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Actually, this passage is, came from um, the book of Numbers, chapter 21. Because in that story in the book of Numbers, the people of Israel, after they were being brought out of Egypt, were complaining and whining against God and Moses. Why? Because they have no food. And they're telling Moses, why did you bring us out of Egypt? Now we don't have any food, we don't have any water. So they keep in whining and complaining. Do we, do we do that most of the time? We always complain. Complain. Why? Because we want instant gratification. We want to get everything right away. So, in punishment in the book of Numbers, God sent them a venomous serpent and bit them, and many died. And after that, people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against God. Please, please, take these serpents away from us. And so God said to Moses, Make a serpent, a seraph, that's the term that was used, and mount it on the pole. And when anyone who is bitten looks at it, he will live. Now, when we look at the cross, we don't see any serpent. We see the Son of Man crucified at the cross. But when we look at the cross and gaze at the cross, what are we reminded of? What do we remember? The cross reminds us of our sins, of our sinfulness. The cross reminds us of our sin and complaining and whining against God. The cross reminds us of our resistance to God's love. To God's love. The cross reminds us of injustice that we have done against others. Do we think about those who are poor, those who are in need, those elderly that they are being abandoned in their places? That's not fair at all. The cross reminds us of our foolishness. We have a lot of foolishness that we have done in our lives. The cross reminds us of our egocentricity. It's me, myself, and my ego. I don't care about others. I just want power. I just want authority. I just want wealth. It's all about me. That is the scene of our self-centeredness. When we look at the cross, we are reminded of those sinfulness that we have done. Continue gazing at the cross. Continue looking at the cross. Who do we see? 
when we gaze at the cross, who do we see? We see the Son of Man. We see the only Son of God who takes on all of our sinfulness, who suffered and died for us, who conquered our sins so that we will receive, we will receive that lovely gift. I like the word lovely gift. That's the grace, the lovely gift of salvation. See how good God is to us. We become cognizant how precious, how precious you and I in the eyes of God. Remember that. Remember how precious you are in the eyes of God. And I would like to quote St. Pope John Paul II in his encyclical Redemptor Hominis the Redeemer of man, he said, How precious must man be in the eyes of the Creator if he gains so great a Redeemer. We gain so great a Redeemer. We will hear this passage in the exalted at the Easter Vigil. Look forward for that. Because indeed, we gain so great a Redeemer who loves us so much, who will always welcome us in His arms. My brothers and sisters in Christ, through the suffering and death and resurrection of Christ, we are reformed. We are remolded. We are reborn. We become new creation. And it's because we become a new creation, therefore, that hope that God is giving us, that hope without this, that will not disappoint, we can share to others. We can share to others so that others will also hope and have trust in God and look forward for their salvation as well. So as Christ renews His unconditional love for us, as we continue celebrating the Eucharist, let us ask Him for that lovely gift, for that grace, not only for us to experience the love of God, but so much so that we can share that unconditional love, especially to those who are still in darkness especially those who are still looking for Christ and looking for his love so that they will find peace together with us they will find find truth and the light of Christ peace and goodwill my brothers and sisters we stand, my brothers and sisters, and we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to continue to gaze upon the cross so that we may have confidence in your mercy and your charity. And so we turn to you with all of our prayers. That Pope Francis, Daniel, Cardinal Leonardo, all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious may be faithful and effective witnesses to the truth of the cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The civic leaders worldwide show wisdom, prudence, and godliness as they carry out the duties of their offices. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who refuse to believe in Jesus will soon embrace the truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we and our loved ones may look upon the cross and always trust in Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who care for the unfortunate may be blessed one hundredfold, and those who have died from disease, natural disasters, or violence may have eternal rest and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our personal intentions, let us now offer those in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, continue to fill our hearts with joy and expectation and help us to, um, to journey to the cross and to the tomb and to your resurrection. And we ask all of our prayers through Jesus Christ, who is our God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal Remedy, O Lord, 
praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both by virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and the powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by of the Holy Spirit. Remember, O Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all of our clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all your saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine, by teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
hit us free. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. On um, Tuesday afternoons, we are trying to start up exposition from 1 until 6.30 in the evening. And we need people to sign up. So make sure to sign up. You should have received a uh, flock note about this. If you don't have flock note, sign up for flock note. And you'll know everything going on in our parish. Um, stations of the um, cross are at the grotto every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. If it's um, storming outside, we come into the hall, so we're not going to make you stand out there. So don't worry about that. Holy Rosary Catholic School is now enrolling pre-K 3 through 8th grade. Um, some of our classes are already starting to uh, fill up. So that's really awesome. We're excited about that. So make sure to sign up as soon as possible. Um, KC uh, Fish Fries um, um, happen every Friday night from 5 to 7 at the KC Hall here in Rosenberg. There is some mass time um, changes. Um, St. W. Uh, mass will now be at 4 p.m. on Saturday. That They've been asking for a different mass time. So Holy Rosary gets their 9.30 mass back which I know a lot of you are very happy about, so we're very happy to offer that. So here at Holy Rosary, we have a Mass at um, 6 p.m. on Saturday. On Sunday, we have a Mass at 7, 9.30, and 11.30. The Lord be with you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Let us um, turn to our Blessed Virgin and continue to ask her to pray for us that our hearts will be filled with joy and expectation. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry for banished children of Eve. To thee do we set up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, the most holy Mother of God. Amen. 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 